Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. James, and we are here in the Hutchins Potions room getting ready to discuss our very first online video talking about oxidation and reduction, a Criterion 5 topic. In these slides today, a little bit of thanks to Mr. Jack Denny, who produced a book, lovely book, and I've used some of the resources from that book in constructing these slides. So credit where credit is due. Thank you, Mr. Denny. And on we go. So the introductory theory today, significant proportion of chemical reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one species to another. And in fact, it's the movement of electrons that makes chemistry occur. So electron transfer occurs through two simultaneous reactions. We call one of them oxidation, and that is where electrons are lost, and the other is reduction, where electrons are gained. So oxidation reduction reactions, which occur together, they are called redox reactions. So let's look at an example. A reaction between sodium metal and chlorine gas requires either a water drop or the use of molten sodium. Let's have a look. A small piece of sodium metal is placed in a flask containing yellow chlorine gas. The flask also contains sand to prevent the heat which will be generated by the reaction from cracking the glass. Initially, no reaction is observed between the sodium and the chlorine. The reaction will be initiated by adding a drop of water to the sodium. So we know here that the reaction is between two equivalents of sodium solid and an equivalent of chlorine gas with some water as a catalyst, shown here, to produce two equivalents of sodium chloride. If we're explicit about what's actually going on here and look at the electron movement, we can break each of these species down into individually what's occurring in each one. So you can see here with the sodium, sodium is actually becoming two lots of sodium ions and two electrons. And this is because of the conservation of mass and charge. So for the two sodium atoms, there must be, if we produce the two sodium ions, we need also the two electrons to balance that mass and charge. Similarly, to get from chlorine gas to chloride ions, we need to add two electrons. And it's really key here that we notice that the number of electrons in these two reactions, the oxidation reaction and the reduction reaction, are equal. And therefore, they balance and that these two reactions can occur simultaneously. So the electron arrangement of each atom changes from ground state to the respective ion. We can see that sodium has two, eight and one electrons. It loses one of those electrons and becomes a species with two and eight electrons. So if we have a look at the periodic table here, we have sodium, which is down here. So we've got two from the first row. We have eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and one. And we lose this one electron here to make the sodium cation and have the same electron configuration as neon, the noble gas, which is more stable. Heading back on over to chlorine, that had two, eight and seven electrons. And you can see that it is in the column just to the left of the most stable noble gas elements. And what we've got here is the chlorine is gaining that one electron to have the same electron configuration as the argon. So now both of our elements are in a more stable electronic configuration. And this reaction is not new. We've been talking about sodium plus chlorine since you're in about grade nine. We're just looking at it in a much more accurate way. More examples of this type of reactivity. It's very common. Uh, we've seen it lots. So the combustion of fuels, reactions of metals with oxygen and acids, photographic reactions, biochemical reactions, the manufacture of plastics, dyes and paints, batteries use this a lot, electrolysis similarly use this a lot and in fact uh, those will become areas for our focus for the study of this unit. So here's a fact for you. 
Any reaction where an element changes its valency is an oxidation reduction reaction. Now remember that the valency is just about equivalent to the charge. So if we go from a neutral species, sodium metal, to a cation, sodium plus, then we have changed the valency. And we call this, when it occurs, a redox reaction or process. Now let's define these processes. Oxidation is a process where electrons are lost. So here we've got aluminium and aluminium is going to lose three electrons to become the aluminium cation. So our three electrons come off here. We've lost electrons and this is called oxidation. Similarly, iodide here has lost two electrons to become iodine. This is also oxidation. So lost electrons here means that it appears as a product. So if the electrons are on the right hand side of the equation, then we've lost electrons, we have oxidation occurring. Reduction, on the other hand, is a process where electrons are gained. So here we have iron 3 plus gaining an electron to become iron 2 plus. Adding those charges together, we go from 3 plus plus a negative to 2 plus. So iron here has undergone reduction. Iodine now, we can add two electrons to iodine and get iodide and we have achieved reduction. Notice that it's the opposite here of the oxidation. So the iodine, we went from iodide to iodine plus two electrons. If we take the iodine plus two electrons, we go back to iodide. So if we're gaining electrons, they always appear as a reactant on the left hand side of the equation. So we have an acronym to remember. Oil rig. So oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Remember the oil rig. It will put you in good stead. The other thing to remember, if we've got an electron on the left hand side of the equation we have reduction and on the right hand side we have oxidation. So here we've got redox which is the process we're looking at. If the electrons are on the reduction side they're first and if they're on the oxidation side they come after the arrow that indicates the equation is balanced. Okay, some facts to note. Electron loss and gain must occur in a pair, so we're not having electrons just magically disappearing from our chemical system. That's a fact. Secondly, the number of electrons lost must always equal the number of electrons gained. This is really important. This is relating to the conservation of charge, the conservation of mass. So, we'll be using this and balancing the equation. Fact. And finally, Oxidation reactions can occur without oxygen because it's about the electrons and it's not about the atoms specifically. Although initially this was discovered in relation to oxygen. Hence the name oxidation. Fact. And here's some universal facts for you. Metals cannot be negative. If you ever write a metal with a negative uh, charge on it, you have made a mistake. Metals cannot hold on to excess electrons. That's a fact. Also, the universe always tends toward the lowest energy. Now that's more important a little bit later on, but it's a universal fact, so I thought I'd put it in here. Because universal facts, they're pretty rare. Fact. So that is it for today's introduction to oxidation and reduction. The important bits here to pick up are recalling which reactions are oxidation, which reactions are reduction, and we'll be moving on from there shortly. That's it from the Potions Lab at the Hutchins School, and I hope you have a good day, and I will see you guys next time.